My name's Josh, and this is Brave Bear Farm. Welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to do a couple of things. First, we're going to kind of review why we had some pretty bad hatch rates on the last two batches of, of hatching eggs that we just did. Um, next, we're going to look at really kind of setting up and making sure the ProMaster Series 120 is running as it should. So, first part, um, we just finished uh, about a month or so ago. We had a batch in here and a, and a hover baiter and a batch in the ProMaster Series 120. The batch in the hover baiter, we got 16 out of uh, 42 eggs. We got 26 out of 110 eggs in here. Um, so starting with the hover baiter. So well, first, I did have really good success doing the dry incubation last year. Um, so I went back to the article that I read through last year um, when I when I had success. This this time I had looked at some other uh, YouTubers and um, watched how they did it, and, and I think I got led a little bit astray. And not any fault of their own, I'm sure it works just fine with their incubators. I think dry incubation is really going to depend heavily on your incubator, and you really got to know your incubator. So. I failed at that, um, my first hatch, especially this one, it's, it's brand new, it's the first time I've used it. Um, so, the article that I read, or blog, I think it is, it's, it's on Backyard Chickens, I'll leave um, a spot in the, the uh, description down below. Um, I think they're Briar Patch um, Hatchery or something like that, but they we're talking I mean, basically dry incubation is, is, is kind of a, a misleading term um, because it's not like you're doing completely no humidity in your in your dry incubation you're actually just using the humidity that's in the air um, in in the um, in the incubator so you kind of let the room kind of stabilize the incubator itself so with, with this, in the beginning, you take out both plugs so that, again, the, the, the humidity in the air can kind of permeate inside the incubator as well. Well, the problem with this is, I, I'm 99% sure, is the atmosphere that we had it in. Number one, it was still kind of cold. We were doing it a little early. Um, it was, so it was pretty cold down here. It was very, very hard, very, very hard to maintain the uh, temperature, I mean, every day I was like adjusting the temperature because I'd come in and it's 104 and then you know, I come in and it would, you know, I actually had to add heat lamps and stuff on into the area and, and close it off with blankets. I know you see my, my purple tie-dye blankets and stuff like that. I just grabbed what I could, kind of created an, an, an atmosphere within my uh, basement to try to keep the temperature the same and so I think ultimately that's what went wrong here I think if we would have had this again in our bedroom or somewhere like that where we really maintain the temperature um, it we would have had a much better success rate um, doing dry incubation now again last year when I did do dry incubation I did put water in in lockdown stage okay and try to get it around 70 percent so I did do that um, last year this year and this one I did not do that in this one, I did put water in, but I think I know why this one failed as well. So, bottom line, I think dry incubation will work on this one, but you really got to know your environment. Um, they really want it to be 40% humidity in the room that this is in, okay? Um, so, and if, if that's fluctuating, you still need to add a little water. Um, if you're, you know, one way or the other, or, 
or maybe even um, closing. If it's high in the room, you're going to want to maybe put the plugs back in and try to close off those plugs so that it, it will drop down lower in the, in the uh, incubator itself. If it's low in the room, that's when you're going to want to add a little bit of water back into the incubator to try to keep it around 40%. Um, so with this guy, we really wanted to kind of set up and, and find out if everything was working on this. This is the first time I'd used it. Um, and I had really just expected it just to boom, pop out 110 eggs. Um, but I needed to, to do some work, do some leg work on this thing. So we have set it back up. Obviously we cleaned everything. We got everything back, you know, set back up right. Um, to set up the, the ProMaster 1 series, I've got another video you can check out. I'm going to say it's right here. I don't know if I can do that yet. I'm, I've never done that. You know, so, But anyway, try to check that out. I'll maybe leave a link uh, for that as well. But um, I have done a, another series on, on this because I didn't see anything on the Internet when I, when I got it. And honestly, these instructions are not very good. Um, so what I am going to do is show you what, what I've done to kind of test everything. So I want you to get a good look here at the incubator. Let me just move the camera. All right. So when we set this back up, after we got everything cleaned up, um, when we set the, the incubator back up, uh, I first started without the styrofoam that it came in in the box. Um, I just had just this, this the incubator and it, it, it did not do as well. Um, it, it got to like 98 degrees, 97 degrees, but it, it, it struggled a little bit to maintain the temperature. So um, once I put this back on, it did great. So if you get a ProMaster Series 120, I recommend keeping the styrofoam that it comes in, it ships in, and and keep that around your incubator just to help the environment inside. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to, I wanted to test the entire thing. I wanted to make sure it's, it's rolling. I wanted to make sure, because again, 26 out of 110 eggs that's not great um so the first thing this is the bottle that it came with and i don't know if you can see there's a, a line that runs down there um just where that was molded together so i put that straight vertical on the rollers because i don't ever actually catch the rollers rolling they roll every two hours for 15 seconds each time so i wanted to make sure that it was actually rolling and so several times I opened it back up and it was turned in different directions. So I know that the rollers are working. I know that it would be turning the eggs. So rolling the eggs, check. All right. Um, the next thing was temperature. Okay. So I originally put, bought a new temperature gauge. Okay. And I have a hard time. There it is. Okay. Not great light. Just bought this temperature gauge at Home Depot. Um, the cool thing with this one is it has a minimum and a maximum. And if you look at the minimum and the maximum, the minimum was 99 degrees and the maximum was 100. Now, that's after I adjusted the setting on the temperature. What I did notice um, on the temperature is that it was one degree off from what I put in to what was showing on the digital readout. It was one degree different. Um, I also have a dial thermometer. Okay. A dial thermometer. It also is like 99 and 100. It's right there in the middle. So again, this is after now I've set this to 101. So this is actually showing 101 degrees and these are showing right at 100. So it's off by a degree. I don't accredit, excuse me, any of that to our misgivings. However, we're going to fix that because um, we can calibrate. That's the cool thing about this thing. We can calibrate the temperature and humidity. Um, so if you'll notice, this one also, it has a uh, hygrometer, I think it's what that's called. I don't know. Humidity reading down here. And it has fluctuated between about 26 and 29 degrees. Um, percent down here um honestly i wasn't sure how much i trusted the humid this one doesn't have humidity i wish it did uh, this one i wasn't sure how much i trusted the dial of, of humidity um and before i started changing this uh, i wanted to make sure so i went and bought i went to lowe's this time so 
Home Depot Lowe's, I got you both in here, okay? Um, I, I don't get paid for that. I'm just, just kidding. But, um, so, uh, I went and bought another one of these today, and it, it's cool too, because it, this one does have temperature, and it's got high and low on the temperature, it's got the humidity, and high and low on the humidity. So, um, this one is showing about 20% humidity, um, where when I leave this thing alone, um, when I open it a lot, it, it, it actually goes up. But because of the humidity outside in the room, the room is about 50%, um, I think, in the room that, that we're in right now. Um, so this is uh, usually showing about 8 to 9%. What that means, and I think that is our problem, that's where we failed in our dry incubation. Because in this, when I, when I dry incubated this one, I did add water in the lockdown stage. And I tried very hard to keep it at um, 75, between 65 and 75%. Um, and what that means is if it's, and, and I only went by this digital readout. So basically what that means, if it was showing 75, it was probably actually 95 inside because it's about 20 degrees off. Um, that drowned in our eggs, that drowned our chicks. So um, I think that's why we had a good bit of uh, just bad results. I, I think I, I'm accrediting a lot of that to, to the unit needing to be calibrated. I should have done that better. I should have um, taken the time to check humidity inside and everything before I, you know, that, this is a lesson for you. Make sure you know your, your incubator. Set that thing up several days in advance and figure out if it's at the right humidity and don't just trust, and that's where I made my mistake, I trusted the digital readout. Um, and it was wrong and so it failed me so i would say uh in the future get you something like this this i i, I recommend this one this one is really good um last year when i bought this one i couldn't find one like this this one was at lowe's it was 10 bucks okay um and again it shows humidity high and low it shows temperature high and low that's really good so with one unit i've got both I can test both of my, of my um, temperature and humidity just to make sure that I'm gonna take that off just to make sure that they're accurate because that that's ultimately what we've got to do just make sure this is really accurate so I think that's that's where we failed at so what we're gonna do now is we're actually going I'm gonna show you how on the ProMaster series 120 how to actually calibrate the temperature um, and humidity so I'm gonna bring you over a little closer All right, so as you can see, my temperature reading right now is right at 100. Um, it's actually set at 101. My humidity is set at, at 40. Really, all that does is alarm you when it's not at that. Um, so it's not like it can just change. Like the temperature, it will change on its own. Uh, with the humidity, you've got to add water in order to get it to change. Um, so we're gonna first change this. We're gonna bring it down one degree. So with it, with it at 100, it's usually about 99 degrees. I'm gonna check. Yeah, about 99 degrees in inside. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the I'm gonna calibrate this down one degree. So by doing that, you hit the set button. So you've got a set button, a plus button, a minus button, and then a, the light for the. So we're going to hit the set button and hold it. All right, and that brings us up to F1. F1 is the minutes that it, how many minutes that it rolls. Sorry, that it, the, the rollers roll. So it rolls every 120 minutes. All right, if you just hit F1 again or a set again, it will take you to F2. So this is also the rollers. This is how long they the rollers roll when they roll. So they roll for 15 seconds. 
F3 is temperature. So I'm going to take it down one degree. Okay, now we've set it 99. That's what it actually is reading inside right now. F4 is the humidity. It's reading it at 9. So I'm going to take that up to 20 because what I'm reading inside right now is 20 um, on my digital hygrometer. So after that, I have no idea. I don't even understand what F5 is in, in the instructions. That's something weird. So I, I don't mess with that at all. So after that, um, that's it. So that's real super simple how to calibrate your humidity and your temperature. So what I'm going to end up doing now is I'm going to, again, check it tonight and make sure that everything's good. And if these in the morning show the same inside, then I'm going to start my next batch. Um, I just want to make sure as I'm calibrating them that it's going to, it's going to stay, stay the same. So, um, but this is super easy and super cool. And hopefully we get a much better hatch rate on this Pro Master Series 120. All right. So that's about going to wrap us up here on our incubator check um, and kind of finding out what our results were. So at the end of the day, this is what I say about dry incubation. Know your incubator. Know what your incubator is capable of. This one, I think, is perfectly capable of taking the atmosphere from, because it is so, it is very, um, very much affected by the atmosphere around it, okay? This one is not so much um, affected by the, which is a good thing, um, but as a result, I don't think I can just go a straight dry incubation with this one. I, I need to add some water uh, to keep it at around 40, 40 degrees, 40% uh, 40 not degrees. Um, but I'm going to keep it around 40%. So just a little bit of water I think is all it's going to take. But that's something I'm going to need to monitor every day um, with this one. This one I think you can, you can do the dry incubation if you want. Um, just again, the moral of the story is do your research and know... Uh, your incubator and we, we dove down into this 120 and realized we had some issues so we fixed those issues uh, by calibrating it and I think we're going to get a much much better result um, here hopefully starting tomorrow morning we're going to start a, a new round we're just going to use this one this time uh, I actually have a, a buddy of mine gave me some chicks uh, some eggs not chicks he gave me some eggs um, that he has really good success rate out of his he has about 85 percent success rate so we're going to throw those some of those in and we're going to throw some of ours in. Um, originally, I was thinking maybe my fertility was a problem. I don't think that was a problem at all. I think my, my chicks were very fertile, and I think most of them did well. So I don't think that's really an issue, but we're just going to test some of his as well. Um, but once you lock down at day 18, don't open until day 23. I know hatch day is, is day 20, tw 21, but you're going to give them a couple of days uh, inside there don't open up for any reason after day 18 once you go into lockdown um five days you're locked down um after five days you can open them up and start start uh extracting them and introducing them to the brooder and the water and all that sort of stuff but uh, i think that's going to wrap us up today and hopefully in the morning we're going to start a new batch and we're going to video that as well and we're going to see if we have better success rate thanks for coming on the farm hey Please subscribe. We'd love for you to be part of the Brave Bear family. And uh, hit that like button. Share us if you can. Thanks for coming with me on the farm. And I hope to see you back soon.